Hey there riders, Motojourno Chris here today. I have just got my replacement GoPro Hero 10 back from GoPro using the subscription paid service, uh, no questions asked camera replacement. And I thought I'd tell you about the experience, uh, whether it's all a giant scam, which obviously it's not, and uh, kind of how it leaves me feeling about GoPro in general. Now to quickly interject, here is the overall cost breakdown in Australian dollars if you're less worried about the whole process and don't wanna watch the whole video. Replacement cost is 150 Aussie dollars plus 10% or 165 or so in total. Shipping was $15, which I did have to pay. And the sub cost is $70 and that is full price. You can sometimes get that discounted. That's $250 all up if you include the sub or $180 if not. But I did get a free enduro battery to cover the cost of shipping and that's valued at say $40 or $32 as a subscriber. And they did give me a choice of other accessories instead, but I had them all. Cheapest I've seen a GoPro Hero 10 is 385 Aussie dollars, but they are listed for 430 on the GoPro site, which may seem a bit pricey, but with a subscription, you are apparently able to get $100 off a camera, so that'd come to $330. Basically, you're saving a potential 150 to 200 Australian dollars using this service, depending whether we roll the cost of the sub in or not. Now, if you're buying a heap of accessories, the sub does actually discount those, making it even better value or if you're already running the subscription for all of the other advantages, then you don't have to worry about paying for it again. The fact that my GoPro Hero 10 failed in under two years, I think is pretty poor. And certainly I still had a GoPro Hero 7 working and a GoPro Hero 8. I lent the 7 to someone who lost it when they were traveling overseas with all the batteries for it. Uh, the, the Hero 10 has done a lot of footage. It's done a lot of recording hours, uh, probably thousands of hours, realistically speaking. But I still, you know, it hadn't been dropped, hadn't been used underwater. Fairly unacceptable, I would say, just my opinion. Their customer reps are really good once you get a hold of them. Getting a hold of customer support is really, really difficult. And also the systems they seem to have set up to deal with these kind of issues are really, really poor. I just honestly, this is going to come out pretty harsh because uh, I normally am quite positive about GoPros. A lot of people have issues with them. I've always been able to overcome those issues, but there's a pretty significant level of incompetence involved on GoPro's part when it comes to some of these systems they have in place. First off, contacting GoPro support is a nightmare. They've got a call me back service, which I've never found to work. And then they have a chat service, which is great because that's much more convenient. People can do it while they do other stuff. To get onto their chat service, you have to basically click the chat button as one of their service reps are available to get through. They don't have a queuing system, which is in 2023 pathetic, and I would probably say unacceptable. So that is really poor. It took me about two weeks to organize the return via their chat service. And of that period, I had to chase them up, I think four times. And one of the periods was one week where it took me trying every day to get a hold of them. It took me a week to get back in contact with them. And that was because, again, their systems are really poor. The first person I contacted, which took a bit of time, they said, yep, okay, we'll organize that all for you. We'll transfer you to billing and they will take your payment details. And then basically you need a return mailing address for the camera and you pay for that. And then once they get the camera, they send the new one out to you. Really cool. And also they do it back to the GoPro Hero 5. And there are a lot of people online saying, oh, I sent my old GoPro in and I got a newer version. Did not happen with me, but I do assume that that probably can happen, particularly with the older cameras. So you might get even better value out of your payment if you do it that way. Uh, but basically I talked to the person, they approved it. Billing did not contact me. I had to chase them up and then finally managed to get them to ring me to give my credit card details. So that was done and then they said, okay, we'll send you out the mailing return address. They didn't do it. I had to chase them up again. And then they did it while I waited on the chat service. So at least at that point I could return the camera, but that was two weeks wasted where it should have been a single contact, basically redirected straight to billing and then billing or whoever should have sent me out the mailing address and it could have been in one day and it would have made me feel a lot better about the whole experience. Once I mailed it to them, uh, that cost me 15 bucks or so and it took two days to get to them and then two days later i had a new camera back waiting for me at the post office so that's that's pretty good that is pretty good 
you will note that it basically comes in a box like this. You're not getting a retail box of the GoPro, a new one. However, the camera itself did certainly appear to be new. It doesn't appear to be refurbished. It is very new looking. Uh, obviously, you're just getting the camera. There's no battery in it, no SD card in it, but they did throw in a battery to cover the cost of shipping it back and all that kind of stuff, which was appreciated. So uh, overall, a success. If you've got the GoPro sub, which costs 70 bucks, and then you pay the 150 plus another 15 or so in tax, you will get a new camera, which is significantly cheaper than going out and buying a replacement camera, which is nice to see. I think in that regard, it's quite good. I guess one of the problems is your camera really has to fail or have something significant happen to it for you need to do that or for you to need to do that. So um, you would hope that there wouldn't normally be issues with the GoPros failing that quickly. To me, they should last a good number of years. Uh, but I do think it's a cool little perk. And obviously I think if you've got a much older camera, that's where this is probably gonna give you the greatest value. As I said, particularly if they send you out perhaps a newer camera, which I don't know how common that is. I just saw a lot of people talking about it online. It didn't happen to me. And I did say to them, how about you send me out a GoPro Hero 12, seeing as how this camera's failed so quickly and I'm having to pay the return shipping, but they were having none of it. Uh, the other perk that you do get with the sub is a $100 discount buying a new camera that's $399 plus, and these are all in Australian dollars. So keep that in mind, but I think it's a cool kind of little perk. It's not gonna work for everyone. They need to clean up the system that you go through to do this to make it more customer friendly because to be honest, uh, while I do think it's a kind of a good service, it should be something that's handled in 30 minutes, uh, not something that takes two weeks of me wasting hours and hours and hours chasing them up for really simple, basic stuff. I would recommend it, particularly if you've already got the subscription and maybe you've got an older GoPro that's a bit on the fritz, uh, this is probably gonna be a good option for you, particularly if you're not super stressed about having the latest camera, because obviously you're not gonna get that. You're gonna be getting an older generation camera replacement, uh, unless you've got a brand new you know, 12, but in, if it's in the warranty period, obviously chase it up as a warranty. Uh, but this is a nice kind of little advantage. And I guess I should add from the extreme sport angle, this service is particularly useful. Now I've run a GoPro for over 10 years, starting with a session five and never had a lens damaged and never had a screen crack. I'm somewhat careful and being helmet mounted helps there. Although I have dropped a helmet with GoPro attached and the GoPro took the brunt of it without issue. But if you had to buy a brand new GoPro and did some significant damage to it, that's obviously not covered under warranty, like face planting into a big rock, GoPro first, throwing it down the road or a mountain and doing serious damage. Well, this gives you the option to pay a nominal fee and have the camera replaced. Is it enough to justify the subscription alone? I'd probably say no, unless you're destroying a few GoPros a year, but there's other perks there as well. Plus, on the off chance you're a photographer, it's possible your gear insurance specifically doesn't cover action cams so while having your GoPro stolen will hurt as obviously you won't have the camera and be able to use this service you can use this to cover most other eventualities where you've still got the camera anyway if you've got any questions let me know down below as always stay safe out there thanks for watching and I'll be back soon